Hello there, welcome to my channel and welcome to this full length yoga practice. As you might know from other videos on my channel, when it's a full length class especially, I like to work with themes or we have classes that are for a certain area of the body specifically. But today when I was um, sequencing this class and when I started to think about what it could be called, I couldn't quite come up with a name for it because I think today it's not just, but it's just a yoga practice and no theme and no special idea behind it. Just always, as always, for you to connect your body, your mind and your soul. So we are going through a class where I would like you to just drop into this practice, enjoy what we're going to do, hopefully, and benefit from it as much as you can. I look really forward to step onto the mat with you and we'll begin lying down in just a moment. So come to lie down on your back in semi-supine or in a constructive rest, as some of you might know it. So as you lie down onto your back, bring the soles of your feet comfortably close to your buttock, knees pointing straight up towards the ceiling. And then just have a bit of a wiggle around so you can really elongate through the spine. Shoulders are down away from the ears. And then if it's comfortable for your practice today, then I would invite you now to place your hands onto either side of your belly, just allowing your elbows to rest. And then as you come into this first posture, as you arrive on your mat today, if you haven't already, allow your eyes to soften now, the eyelids to fall a little bit heavier. And if you rather, have your eyes opened and just choose a spot on the ceiling where you can narrow your awareness towards. And get really comfortable here, arrive in your body, arrive in your practice. Allow everything that happened during your day thus far to gently wash away. Anything that lies ahead of you for the rest of your day, just allow that to be aside as well, because now it's the time for you to really be mindful of your practice and to be in the present moment. As much as you can be, of course, it's always a practice. So as you drop into this yoga practice today, we will still have it, a theme running through it in a traditional manner that we start with breathing, then move into our postural work and then have some end relaxation. But right now, it's time to slowly connect to the breath. So just start to notice the natural flow and rhythm of your breathing. I would like you to not change anything just yet. Just inhale and exhale as you normally would. But become aware of how the breath is moving your body. And where do you physically feel it? And I would like you to notice whether you feel the breath in your upper chest, maybe in the middle of your upper body, the area of your rib cage, or whether you feel it already quite deep, where we try to have it in the lower part of the upper body, the abdominal area. So notice where the breath sits for you today. And then slowly start to draw the breath down into your belly. And we work with a spinal visual today. It's also used um, when we talk about the root chakra, the first chakra, a really grounding breath that we're working on. And as you start to Begin your pranayama in a moment. I would like you to imagine when you inhale, you draw the breath down along your spine. You breathe all the way down into the pelvic area. And as you exhale, the breath is releasing from the pelvic area, the area of the base of the spine, tailbone, and then releasing out, moving through the belly, the middle um, of the upper body, rib cage, chest, and then nostrils. That might have sounded really complicated, but just Imagine you draw the breath down into your body, all the way down into the area of your tailbone on the inhale. And on the exhale, you reverse the cycle and you breathe from the tailbone upwards. 
until the breath releases out of the nostrils. And we're gonna add a we're gonna add a counting and to unite our breaths together now. I would like you to take an inhale through the nose, deep breath in. Then open your mouth and gently sigh it out. Beautiful work. Now take an in-breath for four, three, two, one. Relax the area of your belly, your abdominal area. Hold it for a moment. And then gently open your mouth and just softly release it on a count of four, three, two, one. And again, relax the belly. Now inhale for four, three, two, one. Draw your breath down into the body. And then reverse it, take it upward, exhale for four, three, two, one, and release. Breathing in for four, three, two, one, hold it. Really imagine you drop down into the hips with your breath and then exhale for four, three, two, one, letting go. Take three more rounds of this count, four and four. And while you breathe, just try to stay really relaxed in your upper chest and your neck. Visualize the breath moving down into your body and exhaling, drawing the breath up the body, up from the tailbone, through the body, out of your mouth or nostril, whatever feels comfortable. While you're breathing, keep your facial muscles nice and relaxed. And see if you can, rather than just thinking and doing the breath, if you can really feel your way into it. Take your last round. Beautiful work, very, very nice. And after your last out breath, with a full count, slowly start to extend your legs down. Just return to a deep, natural rhythm of breath. You can keep your eyes closed or open your eyes, bring your arms up and overhead, chin towards the chest. And then just have a little bit of a wiggle here. Extend through one heel and then the other. Arms are reaching up and overhead. And now we're going to take that into a first side stretch, our nice C shape or called Bananasana as well, the banana shape we're drawing with the body. So lift your upper body and shuffle it all the way over to the left side. Keep your legs for today where they are, but just shift the body as far as you can comfortably go. Arms are up and overhead. Left hand grabs hold of the right wrist. If you'd like to deepen the sensation, step the right foot on top of the left leg. See if you can really extend out of your heels and reach into your fingertips, keeping the shoulder blades down. And now as you start to breathe again nice and deeply, feel your right side body expanding, opening up on the inhalation. So you're actively stretching and lengthening on every out breath. Just relax your body into the shape a little bit more. Take one more nice long round, nice slow round of inhale. Actively extend out of the heels, out of the fingertips. Beautiful work. And then slowly walk your body back through center, uncross your feet. And now we're going to take it over to the other side. So body goes to the right as far as you'd like to. Right hand holds onto the left wrist. Now step the left foot over the right leg. Make sure you're really nice and long. Left hip is grounding down. And then chin tucks into the chest as you start to lengthen and feel the left side body expanding. On every inhale, you can be a bit more active in the body. So stretch and lengthen. And every out breath, you can just relax, let go for a moment. It's quite effective sometimes to do a bit of both relaxation and then engaging again. Very, very nice. One more inhale. And then on the out breath, slowly walk your body back through to center and bring your knees in and up towards your chest. From here, bring your left hand onto the left knee, right palm onto the right knee and start to open your knees apart and back together for some hip circles. Really try to lead the way from your hip joints. 
Have you looked at your lower back? Your sacrum stays connected. So you might want to start engaging your abdominals slightly. And while you're rotating, first initial movement for the hips. You can also circle through the elbows, the shoulders, and then change the direction of your circles. And especially when the knees go forward, you might feel that your lower back automatically lifts and that's where you want to engage. Draw navel to the spine so you stay nice and firm on the mat. Beautiful work. Take one last round here. And then bring your knees in and up towards the chest. Hands come onto the back of your thighs, your hamstrings. And then if that's okay with your back, you start rocking up and down the full length of your spine. And this is actually a really nice massage if it feels good for your spine. So take a couple more rounds. And then on your next one, we meet in a cross-legged seat. So come all the way up and find your way into a cross-legged seated posture. Beautiful work. Make sure you have the fleshy part away from underneath your sits bones. And then bring your hands together, interlock your fingers, push the palms forward and then start to raise your arms up and overhead as far as they go. So follow your shoulders, don't overdo it. Fingertips are reaching back, back, back. Pinky fingers, that's what I wanted to say, are reaching back and you're just lightly tucking the chin down towards the chest. Notice where your upper body is and you want to really let the upper body just rest on top of the hips. So heart over the hips and the head crown of that is reaching upwards. While you lengthen your arms, you might again feel the side body opening here. Take an in-breath, draw your gaze back to center. On the out-breath, bring your body up and over to the left. Side body stretch. While you come to the left, use your right arm to just slightly guide your left arm a bit more up and overhead. Take another in-breath and an out-breath back to center and over to the right. Keep the head relaxed. If you're quite prone to have some neck discomfort, you could always do a bit of movement here. Stay heavy in the left hip, very nice. And inhale, come back to center. Release your hands, palms are facing each other. Drop the left hand down and then reach the right arm up and overhead. Just again, allowing the side body to open. And now we take a few rounds of circles. So draw your arm back and behind you. Depending on the space, you might draw really big circles. If you don't have as much space, you just keep the circles a bit smaller. And the idea is to move from the shoulder joint, to warm up the shoulders. So notice the way is let from your shoulder joint here, or by your shoulder joint rather. Take one more circle. And then we take it up and over to the other side. So right hand comes down, left arm extends up and overhead, shoulder blade drops, and then again, cactus your arm backwards and then start to draw circles. It really doesn't matter how big these circles are. The main aim is to open up the shoulder joints So feel how you can move in different directions here. If it feels nice, follow your palm with your gaze. Beautiful work, one more round. Very nice, and then come all the way back to center, bring your arms up and overhead. One more time, interlock your fingers, push your palms up, then bring your palms again midway down, hands are pointing forward, then drop your chin down your chest and start to round your back, so this cat-like back that we are doing, in cat and cow, palms are pushing forward, shoulder blades are reaching back, round, round, round. Beautiful work, very nice, and then slowly release, come all the way back to center. Now from here, extend your legs out so you're in a wide-legged seated posture. You can have straight legs or bent legs, you could have blocks underneath your knees as well. Flex the toes, toes are parallel to your shin bones, and then from here, drop your palms down onto your legs and start to circle with your upper body. Again, we take a first few rounds where we stay a bit smaller in those circles. You're leading the way from your hips this time. So not just the upper chest, it really is hip circling and then the upper body will follow that motion. You can then start to drop into bigger circles, really allowing the body to kind of flop into those circles and 
ease its way into the movement. Keep breathing, nice deep belly breaths. Very nice, and then start to change the way you're circling, other direction. And just see again if you can keep the breath ad abdominal. It's a nice deep belly breath. Rolling from the hips, so keeping that connection of hips and floor. Beautiful work, very nice. And then once you finish your circles, you return back to center. Take your hands underneath the knees guide your knees to center and then we roll forward into tabletop so find your way onto your palms and knees as always spread your fingers wide so you get a good grip bring your knees underneath your hips and untuck your toes so you can really press the tops of your feet down try to really lift your bottom up towards the ceiling for a moment so you're kind of sticking out your bottom for a moment and then rotate through the pelvis so you're tucking the tailbone under and see if you can transfer the weight slightly forward over the wrist so shoulders over the wrist and this tucking under of the tailbone should already feel like a bit of engagement of your core navel is drawing in and up once you have that connection press the feet down we take an in breath here now on the out breath push the mat away and start to hover off the mat knees are hovering not hover your whole body of the mat knees are hovering off the mat take a breath here if your body starts to shake just keep breathing deep or an alternative is you keep the knees down and just press the mat away here take another inhale wherever you are and then slowly release the knees down child's pose soften the hips back extend your arms forward so you can really lengthen out of your lower back again and now we do that two more times. So slide your hands back in, tabletop. Press your feet down, inhale. On your out breath, push the mat away. Hover the knees off the mat. And imagine you're, you're moving your thighs in towards one another, but they're not physically moving in. It's just that muscular engagement. Shoulder blades are reaching away from one another. Inhale. And on the next out breath, soften knees. Child's pose, balasana. Take a moment to rest one last round come all the way back this time curl your toes under we do exactly the same but with the toes in a different position breathe in and breathe out push the mat away hover your knees off the mat and try it again to tuck your tailbone under lower um, lower belly is active crown of the head reaches forward lift the back of your head slightly Take another in-breath. Instead of child's pose, we move into downward facing dog. So move the hips back and then as slow as you can, move up into your first downward facing dog for today's practice. And then you might need to shift around on your mat, finding a comfortable downward facing dog. So you want to have a, a V shape with the body, arms along, feet hip width. And then we start with those hip circles again. Now, this might feel very, very different, but try to again move from the hips. Don't worry how it looks like, rather tune into feeling. And change the direction of your circles. And then pause once you come back into your downward facing dog. Keep your shoulders away from the ears, so externally rotate them away. Ground into your left leg and then start to pick the right foot off the mat. We start to move into a bit more of a strong practice now. So if you'd like to drop into tabletop, you can do the same. Otherwise, inhale, extend the right leg up into a three-legged down dog. Inhale, leg is long. Exhale, lower the leg down. Again, you can do tabletop. Inhale, left leg moves back and then up. Really lift the leg out from the hip. Breathing in, breathing out to lower. Four more times. Inhale, lift the leg. Exhale to lower. Beautiful work. Keep your arms strong. Inhale to lift. Breathing out. Three more rounds. Head is relaxed. Rather than thinking through it like we did in another practice, try to really feel into the movement. And the stronger your breath is, the more supportive it will be for your posture. I think we're approaching the last round. Inhale for the right leg. Exhale it down. Inhale, left leg, three-legged dog. 
beautiful work and then release lift the heels look forward and slowly walk the feet all the way through to the top of your mat <sighs> and then you're there uttanasana forward fall this is like a, a little gift after that strong work you can then relax the head hold up the sit elbows and just sway the body left and right let the head be so relaxed that you feel it almost becoming weightless Come back to center and just allow your arms to hang, feet to ground, and then tuck, you, tuck your chin down to your chest. And ever so slowly, if it's okay with your back, roll up to standing. Once you come into Tadasana, lift the shoulders and drop them down and away from the ears. Very, very nice. So we take a few rounds of flow before we move into our standing postures. And we mix it up slightly, so we do different routines in my classes. But today I would like you to bring your hands to your heart, into Namaskar. Again, even when you're standing, tuck the tailbone under and grow nice and long in the body. Take a moment to just breathe here. Arrive in your Tadasana mountain pose. Feel the connection of your hands, the feet and the earth. And then let's start to breathe and move. Inhale, palms move up together. Draw your thumbs up and look to your thumbs. Inhale, exhale, open your arms and dive into your forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift the body halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. So you're parallel to the floor. Exhale, release your fingertips down, step the right foot back, lower the right knee to the earth. For lower lunge, try to draw your chest forward. Sink into your hips. Keep your back toes curled under, downward facing dog, step the left foot back. Again, if you're not getting tired of a three-legged dog, you can now inhale, extend the right leg back and up. Nice long leg, look forward, step the right foot to your right hand, soften the left knee down. Breathe and open the chest, the heart forward, keep the shoulders relaxed. Forward fold, exhale, step the left leg forward to meet the right. Inhale, come up to standing with a nice flat back. Draw your arms around and up. Breathing in, hands together. Exhale, hands to the heart. We start again, breathing. Nice long body, follow your thumbs. Exhale, open it out, forward fold. Inhale, lift the body halfway, lengthen. Fingertips or palms come to the earth. Step the left foot back, nice long leg, and then drop the leg down. Move the right knee forward, open up the heart. Downward facing dog. Breathe in, extend the left leg back and up. Look forward, left foot to the left hand. Release the right knee, Anjaniasana, low lunge. Take another in breath to open the heart. Start to lift the right knee, step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, bend your knees generously, come up to standing. Nice long arms, look up. Exhale to release. Hands stay at the heart. Two more rounds. We slightly change it up. Inhale. Exhale. Open and fold. Breathe in. Lift the body halfway. As you breathe out this time, step the right foot back again. Lower the knee, but then draw your palms forward and up. Anjaniasana, low lunge. Circle your arms around the body. Downward facing dog. For your first vinyasa, roll forward, bring your shoulders over your wrists, plank or half plank with the knees down, shift forward and lower down to the earth. Inhale for cobra, bhujangasana, open your heart, exhale to fold, downward facing dog. Inhale, extend the right leg back and up, exhale, take the right foot to the right hand, lower lunge, take your palms this time, reach them up. Hands to the front, step it forward, forward fold. Inhale, bend your knees, chest is leading the way up, breathing in, breathing out, hands to the heart. Last round, inhale, palms move up in prayer. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift the body halfway, release the hands, step the left foot back, left knee comes down, inhale, open it up. Exhale, downward facing dog. Let's move with the breath now. Inhale, come forward into plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. 
or halfway for your upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Left leg comes up this time. Step the left foot forward, low lunge. Breathe in to open. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, come up to standing arms, reach around the body and up. Exhale, hands to the heart and then release. And just take a moment here to either close your eyes again, maybe have a sip of water or anything that feels right to do. You can shift your weight from one foot to the other, close your eyes and just return to a deep nourishing breath. The much or the more you lower your breath, the more your heart rate will start to go down. Enjoy that bit of buzzing and energy moving through the body now. Beautiful work, very nice. And then open your eyes, draw your hands back to your heart and we will move into our standing postures. So shift the weight into your right foot, become light in the left leg. For high lunge, step the left foot back. You can have a short distance between your legs to make it a bit more accessible for the body or you can really lengthen that leg and come into quite a long stance. Try to tuck your tailbone under while you find your balance. So you're feeling again the core engaging and you're just protected through the belly and the lower back. Within your lunge, find your balance, lift your back heel and then inhale, palms move up and overhead again, hands are together in prayer. If this is nice, you could always Bring your thumbs on top of one another, staying here. Or you bring your palms shoulder width apart if that's more comfortable. Wherever you are, tuck your chin back in towards the chest. And just take a moment to notice your breath, the challenge of this posture, but the steadiness you're in. Take another in breath. And as you breathe out, release your arms around and down onto the hips. Extend your front leg for pyramid pose. Step the back foot one step further in. Your feet are now hip width or almost mat width apart. Turn your upper body forward. As you breathe in, gently push your hips down so you can lift the chest. As you exhale, really keep pushing into the back leg and come down halfway. So like tabletop your body, your chest is parallel to the floor. Hug your elbows into the sides of your body. Inhale, reach the crown of your head forward. And then as you exhale, imagine folding over that right leg. Still keep your hands on the hips so you can guide your hips back, the crown forward. And then once you feel that this is your forward fold, release your hands down. You can have one palm on either side of the right foot, or you take your hands up your leg anywhere that is comfortable. It doesn't matter how far you're going. And now as you come into your pyramid forward, try to shift the weight evenly into the front and back foot. Maybe closing the eyes or with the eyes open, just drawing the awareness back to the breath. Jaw is relaxed. Head is relaxed, but your spine is elongating and lengthening. Very, very nice. Beautiful work. Now slowly bend your front knee, take your hands back up onto your hips, come out the same way you came in, and then for warrior two, take a bigger step back with your left foot, turn around on your back leg so you can come into a warrior two stance with the back foot parallel to the short edge of your mat. Bend into your front leg, come into warrior two, Virabhadrasana two, and then send your gaze over your front fingers. Keep the shoulders soft. And now let's bring some movement into our warrior. Palms are facing up. As you inhale, extend the front leg. Pray your hands, you can look up or straight forward. Exhale, look forward, warrior two. Four more rounds. Inhale, really breathe in down into your belly. As you exhale, imagine the breath moving up your spine and release it through the mouth or nose. Three more counts, inhale. Exhale, warrior two. 
So as you lift up, press out of your front leg. And as you move into warrior two, again, extend your back leg and stay really strong in the back leg. Inhale, one more round. Very, very nice. And then for your vinyasa, your flow, release your hands forward and down. Careful with the knees, step it back into your plank. Low plank or high plank, shift forward, lower down to the earth. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Breathe out and back into your downward facing dog. From here, lift your heels, look forward, walk, hop or step to the top of your mat. Roll up to standing, arms are heavy. And then again, lift the shoulders and drop them away from the ears. And you can stay exactly where you are. I'm just going to the other side so you can fully see it. Bring your hands to your heart and mindfully shift your weight into your left leg. Lift your right leg, high lunge, step it back. Again here, tuck your tailbone under. So you, rather than having an arched back, you want to draw everything towards the midline, staying engaged. Hands are here. Choose the distance between your feet. Find your comfort and then draw your palms up. Whichever position you've taken, if you've crossed your thumbs, bring your other thumb on top or bring your hands to shoulder width apart. Head is gently tucking back, so your upper arms are framing the head and your breath is nice and deep. Take another moment to inhale. And then on your out breath, release your arms down. Take your hands onto your hips, lengthen your front leg, step the back foot in the same routine that we've just done on the other side, pyramids pose. On your in breath, gently press the hips down, lift your upper body, exhale. Imagine folding over that left leg halfway, about halfway. The hips are reaching back like in down dog, crown of the head forward. Take another inhale, lift your body away from the thigh. And then our breath guides you into that pyramid fold. Allow your chest to release towards the thigh. Don't worry if you're up here. And then take your hands onto anywhere where you can support yourself. And while you come into this pyramid fold, try to again shift the weight also into the back leg here. Both feet are grounded but not tense. And you rotate your right hip slightly forward, left hip back to even out the hips. And after so many information, <laughs> so much information, just try to feel the posture, breathe into it. And then to come out again, take your hands onto the hips, lift the body halfway, bend the front leg, warrior two, reach your back leg just a little bit further away so you can open it out for Virabhadrasana two. Gazes over the front fingers, looking into the distance. And then let's bring movement into warrior two. Hands face up. Inhale, reach and lift. Out breath brings you back into warrior two. Again, on the inhale, push out of your left leg to come up. As you breathe out, stay nice and aware of your back leg. Beautiful work. Three more rounds. Two more. Last round. And as you breathe out, we take that into your vinyasa. Release your hands down. Step back into your plank or half plank. Shift the body forward. Take a round of vinyasa. Going through upward facing dog or your cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Have a bit of a pedal, a bit of movement here in your downward facing dog. And while you move the legs, walk your hands one after the other in towards your feet, coming towards the back of your yoga mat. Again, as you inhale, roll up to standing. And as you exhale, release and relax the shoulders away from the ears. So, and our standing practice is almost... Um, Coming to a closure for today, so we move into our last balancing posture for today. Quite traditionally, after we've done standing, we do a bit of balance and then start to slow it down. 
Our balancing for today will be standing splits. And you can stand anywhere on the mat, just make sure you have enough space behind you. We start with the left leg. So transfer the weight into your left foot and keep a bit of a bend in that leg. For today, we step the right foot slightly back. So you have a bit of a distance, similar to pyramid's pose. Now take your fingertips, bend the front leg and about a foot, a step further forward, you're placing your fingertips a bit more than shoulder width apart. Now rock the weight into your front foot and you can use blocks or anything to bring the earth further up to you. Lift your right leg, relax the head, so really make sure you're not tensing up. And then imagine you press out of your standing leg, you lift the hips, and then like in a three-legged dog, you start to extend the right leg back and up. While you lengthen the leg, again, it doesn't matter how high you go, draw the crown of your head down, make sure you're not opening up through the hip, so hips stay parallel. Take another in-breath, reach, reach, reach. And then as you come out, we're coming into a one-legged Tadasana. Bend your knee, both knees actually, come all the way up to standing, see if you can balance. Hands to the heart, one-legged mountain pose. Bring your arms up and overhead, shoulder width apart again. Inhale here. And as you exhale right away, transfer the weight into the right leg as your standing leg. Left foot steps back so we keep the focus. Dive forward, connect your fingertips, lift the left foot, really ground into your right leg, bend your knee, and then start to lift. Lift out of your hips and reach the crown of your head down, keep it soft. Imagine you move your elbows away from one another so your shoulder blades can broaden. Keep breathing, keep lengthening. One more inhale. Beautiful work again, one leg at Tadasana, slowly, elegantly make your way up to standing. Hands to the heart, up and overhead or shoulder width apart. Inhale here and then as you exhale, slowly release. Beautiful work, very, very nice. And we come down into our last floor based sequence. So come back down onto the mat and re-extend your legs away from one another. Make sure you move that fleshy part away from underneath your sits bones, flex the toes. Now from here, take your right hand down and inhale, reach the left arm up and overhead. And I think I'm not mirroring you here, so you do any size first. As you breathe in, come back to center. Exhale to the right. As you inhale again, actually I'm now doing mirroring you so left hand down right palm onto the other side of the leg lift 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 and then start to fold your upper body over that left thigh and as you fold here you want to stay heavy in the right hip so your right hip is staying grounded gently push out of your right leg sometimes that helps to deepen the sensation a little bit and still have that visual look visual of reaching the crown of your head forward and rooting down into the hips so elongating the spine you can also hold on to the leg if that allows you to go into a bit more depth turn your right elbow down your left shoulder slightly up beautiful work and then for the other side engage the core come back through center Release your right hand down, left palm onto the other side. Inhale to lift, to twist and turn your body slightly. Exhale to lower. This time it's the left hip that stays heavy. Head is reaching forward. And the left elbow is rather pointing down. Right shoulder kind of leveling itself out with the other. Relax your jaw. Maybe close your eyes here. Beautiful work, very, very nice. Slowly engage the core, lift back through to center. And then we come to lie down on the back. So come back to where you've started your practice in semi-supine. And then bring your knees back in towards the chest. Start to open your knees for a few hip circles. 
change direction. Very, very nice. And then next time your knees come back to center, drop the right foot down, extend your left leg up. And it's almost as if we mirror um, pyramids pose here lying down. So you can now start to lengthen your right leg down the mat. And with as little effort as possible, you don't want to drag the knee into your chest. You just slowly start to work with the breath and on the exhale, maybe bring the leg a bit closer in towards you. Shoulders are relaxing down. Gaze is soft or the eyes can be closed. Feel your legs extending and lengthening. You can have your knees as bent as you like. Before we come out of this side, inhale, lift your whole upper body. Look toward your foot. Try to bring your knee toward your nose, just that direction. Again, you don't have to go there. One more inhale to lift, lift, lift. Engage the abdominals. As you breathe out, bend your knees. And then for your spinal twist, right hand on the left knee, guide your knee across into your twist. Open the left arm. You can do cactus or a half T shape. And send your gaze over towards that left shoulder now. With every inhale, feel your body rising. Hand is soft on the leg. And with every out breath, maybe you guide yourself a little bit more into a twist. No pushing or pulling, allowing the body to go to wherever is good for you today. Very nice. Bring your head back to center first and then unroll. Left foot meets the ground, and then it's the right leg that extends. Hold on to anywhere you can, and then start to extend your left leg down. Staying active through both feet. Neck muscles are relaxed. Breath is abdominal. Beautiful work. And then as you try to draw the knee a bit closer towards you, lift the chest, engage your core, look up towards your foot. Inhale, lift, lift, lift. Very nice. And then on the out breath, vertebra by vertebra, release your spine, bend the right knee, left hand on the right knee, and then guide it across and over into your twist. Open out of your left arm and send your gaze comfortably over towards the right shoulder. Notice your belly rising and falling with every round of breath. Shoulders are sinking down towards the earth on every exhale. And you're just allowing your body to move into the twist rather than guiding it too much. Very, very nice. On your next inhale, bring your head back to center Exhale, slowly unwind. For one last movement, before we come into our final rest, bring your knees into your chest, wrap your arms tight around your legs, and then again, curl up through the spine, lift your knees towards your nose. Just hold everything in towards each other like a big ball. One more breath, inhale. And then for your final rest, your Shavasana, Slowly, slowly start to release your body into a nice, comfortable position. Arms are alongside the body, hands facing up now. Tuck your chin in towards your chest. And then once you're ready to let go of your practice, close your eyes. Allow your awareness to drop inward. As you start to open the gaze to your inner landscape, the inner world. Just notice how the breath feels now in comparison to when you stepped onto the mat. 
It might be that you feel it is still in the same area, but hopefully for most of you it has dropped a little bit more and you feel the belly, the diaphragm doing its work. Allow your breath now to move into a natural cycle. So you don't have to do anything, you can just allow it to happen. And then feel every part of your physical body that is connected to the mat, from the heels all the way up into the crown of your head, getting heavier and heavier. Bring your awareness down into your heels and feel the heels comfortably sinking down towards the earth. Relax your calves, the back of your knees, the back of your thighs. Notice your hips releasing, the glutes relaxing weight of your hips just gently pressing down towards the earth. Relax your lower back, your middle back, your upper back. Feel the tops of your shoulders releasing and relaxing towards the earth. Upper arms are heavy, elbows are heavy, your forearms, the back of your hands, your wrists are nice and relaxed. Notice the natural curling of your fingers and that sense of release through the palms. Notice your facial muscles relaxing now. The space between your eyes, your eyebrows releasing. Jaw relaxing throat relaxing, your upper chest, the area of your collarbones releasing, middle part of your body, from the ribs all the way into the belly, nice and soft now, nice and relaxed. Tops of your hips, tops of your thighs, knees, shins and your feet are completely relaxed in your Shavasana now. And see whether you can for those next few moments, just allow your body to surrender. Allow yourself to drop into this space of complete relaxation in your final resting pose, your Shavasana. Allow the weight of your body to be held by the earth, to just release and relax now. And then very slowly from here, start to deepen your breath again. Bring some movement back into your physical body, moving the feet, the hands, fingers and toes, 
Gently rock the head from left to right. And then roll onto any side you feel drawn to. Come into a side lying position. If you can, still with your eyes closed. And then slowly guide your body up into a comfortable seated posture. And to seal off our practice today, gently rest your hands down onto your knees or connect your hands to your heart. Bowing your head in gratitude. And just take a moment to really allow the practice, the benefits of this practice, to sink in. And whatever you wish for the rest of your day, hopefully that will be with you. Thank you so much for practicing. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Take best care. Namaste. Mm -hmm.